When people talk about climate change, often I hear the word global warming. I don't like that term because it does not fully cover and comprehensively describe what we are talking about. We are talking about changes in all components of the climate system that concern most physical variables and concern also other uh, areas uh, like ecosystems. It's a, an earth encompassing change at which we are looking now. But obviously uh, it started from observing the temperature and that is where uh, the origin of this term comes from. So let's look at uh, the temperature first. Uh, we see that uh, over the last 120 years uh, the earth's mean surface temperature has increased by about 0.85 degrees Celsius. Now people tell uh, me this is a very small amount. It's even less than one degree. Uh, but uh, humans are kind of strange species when they talk about uh, temperature. Because uh, in certain areas we have a very fine sensorium and feeling about temperature changes. Take for example, uh, if you take the measurement, the temperature measurement of your baby. It actually uh, depends whether you measure 36.9 degrees Celsius and everything is fine. If you measure 37.0 degrees Celsius, you have uh, identified uh, some developing fever. So only a tenth of a degree in this temperature measurement is for us of concern. And it is similar in the Earth system uh, by looking at the global mean temperature, uh, seeing that this temperature has risen already by 0.85 degrees, and also recognizing that with the increase of greenhouse gas concentrations, which today for carbon dioxide are 30% higher than ever in the past 800,000 years, we are heading towards a climate uh, that has a much higher temperature in the near future if these emissions uh, are not uh, stopped and greenhouse gas concentrations are not stabilized. So let us take a, a more comprehensive look uh, beyond the temperatures uh, on the long term I've already uh, talked about the composition of the atmosphere, which today is very different from the natural conditions that scientists have reconstructed uh, thanks to uh, the analysis in uh, polar ice cores from Antarctica. We can reconstruct uh, the greenhouse gas concentrations and note that today's concentrations are very different. Uh, this also concerns uh, the water cycle. Uh, we already uh, note that uh, in the past 60 years the global water cycle has changed in that uh, wetter areas have become wetter and uh, drier areas have uh, faced some uh, more dry conditions. We also see that uh, sea level has risen by 19 centimeter, itself uh, one of the most impressive changes in the climate system concerning one of the primary resource of humans, uh, the access to land, land to uh, build cities, uh, land to live, but also land uh, to produce food. And uh, that means that uh, this uh, resource is threatened in the future as sea level is continuing. One of the most impressive uh, observations of uh, climate change, however, is um, the recognition that the whole world ocean has warmed up in the last uh, 50 years. Temperature measurements uh, that cover essentially the entire ocean surface and also uh, the uh, ocean depth down to two kilometers allow us to estimate the amount of energy that has penetrated the ocean over the past 50 years. Uh, it's a, a, a staggering amount of 250 times 10 to the 21 joules, uh, an amount of energy that is almost unimaginable, but uh, it is in front of our eyes, uh, uh, thanks to very precise uh, temperature measurements of the scientific community around the world. This is an impressive manifestation that man has changed the face of the earth, uh, we are, through the emissions of greenhouse gases caused by the burning of fossil fuels and uh, deforestation, uh, changing uh, the fate of this planet.
When we talk about the warming, I often hear people talking about the past 15 years. Some even talk about a warming pause. Here I think it's uh, very important to look at the facts, like uh, the scientists do. They look at the measurements and they ask questions. Do we understand this short-term variability of uh, uh, the global mean temperature that uh, shows uh, sometimes a large trend, sometimes a lesser trend uh, if you look at uh, 10 years or 15 years. What we have noted is that uh, since 1998, if you start to calculate 15 years trend, that trend is a bit smaller than the longer term trend over 60 years. Uh, but uh, it very much depends at which uh, year you start your analysis. Uh, if you do that from 1998, you get about 0 0.05 degrees Celsius per decade as a warming trend. Had you started two years earlier, in 1996, your calculation would yield 0 0.14 degrees Celsius per decade, which is almost three times larger, which is a very clear indicator that uh, looking at 15-year trends only does not tell you much about the long-term climate change. And that is why uh, the scientists focus on very long timescales, many decades, uh, more than 100 years, using paleoclimate data. They even go back for a thousand years and try to compare uh, the climate of today with the climate over the last uh, thousand years uh, with some very interesting and important insights uh, regarding the natural variations that uh, nature is able to create uh, superimposed on the long-term trend that is caused uh, by human activity. In addition to the temperature changes that are probably the easiest to measure, uh, scientists now also can uh, affirm uh, large changes in the frozen world, uh, the cryosphere, uh, the mass of the ice sheets in Greenland and in Antarctica is shrinking at an accelerating pace. We're losing ice uh, because of the warming uh, in the high latitudes. Uh, ice is melting and contributes substantially to sea level rise. Uh, we also note that the Arctic uh, ice cover has shrunk, uh, not only in extent uh, during summertime, but also in thickness, which means a totally different quality of the ice uh, that we are now encountering in the Arctic, uh, a quality of ice that is much more vulnerable to uh, high temperatures than much thicker ice that is able to uh, buffer uh, the changes. One of the uh, changes that uh, almost goes unnoticed uh, by the public is the acidification of the ocean. With the increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the ocean becomes more acid, which means that uh, marine organisms that uh, create shells uh, that uh, need to calcify, extract uh, uh, cal uh, calcium carbonate uh, from the water, they uh, get uh, a much harder time to build their shells in an environment uh, that is more acid. Uh, this acidification is one of the uh, largest scale impacts uh, with the longest time scale uh, that uh, man is inflicting on this climate system. Uh, we know that uh, once carbon dioxide is emitted and uh, creates the warming uh, in the atmosphere, but also the acidification in the ocean. This carbon dioxide stays in the atmosphere for many millennia, uh, which means that uh, the changes that we are uh, um, bringing into the climate system today uh, will be with us for a long, long time. Like in any scientific endeavor, there are still uh, many open questions. Uh, they don't uh, fundamentally uh, put into question uh, our knowledge on uh, climate change, but uh, they um, concern important issues that we would like to know better and uh, better understand. Uh, I can think of three issues here. The first concerns the water cycle. As water is the primary resource to humans and ecosystems, we would like to know how the water cycle responds to a warmer world. Uh, where are the areas that receive more water? Uh, what is the change in seasonality, for example, uh, in precipitation? These are important questions when it comes to 
trying to evaluate and estimate how ecosystems, uh, forests, vegetation, uh, eventually food production will respond to climate change and what options there are for adaptation. The second uh, concerns uh, the question of instabilities in the climate system. Observations indicate that uh, some of the large ice streams may become unstable, unstable in uh, the near future. Uh, some already show some signs of instability uh, in Antarctica, which has uh, serious implications for sea level rise. Uh, however, the physical mechanisms and the observational database uh, are still limited and I hope that in the future that the scientists uh, together with theoreticians uh, understanding these processes would be able to better inform us about uh, instabilities and uh, the proximity to which uh, we will come in, in the near future. And the third point concerns the ocean. Uh, the ocean as a vast reservoir of heat, uh, but also carbon dioxide acidifies. And uh, that effect on marine ecosystems and marine life, one of the future food stores uh, of humanity, uh, is uh, very little known. Uh, we don't know what the uh, response of these ecosystems will be to uh, an ocean that uh, will be more acidic and warmer. Uh, that also has uh, a, a change in sea level, uh, questions that need to be urgently addressed uh, by a concerted effort uh, of interdisciplinary action by physical scientists, uh, biologists and chemists.